Jane. See, I told you it was a fuse, Colleen. Has your ceiling always been this low, Mark? Colin, you bastard! What? Did you or didn't you? Did I didn't know what? You know what. I don't know what. You do know what. What are you on about? Two tins of crab, Colin. They want me. It must have been Graham. Graham is allergic to seafood. Hang on. It couldn't have been me who had this crab anyway. These tins. They've been opened from the inside. You're, you're covered in blood, you're saying you've lost your memory and on the very same night the local butcher stand brutally murdered. Could have happened to anyone. Look, I understand your situation, okay? What with your job and everything? Oh, yes. I don't know why I trusted you. I don't know why I didn't turn you in as soon as you arrived. Perhaps you had a crush on me. It, it's probably an eclipse. Eclipse? Eclipse? It's not an eclipse, Martin. It's daylight. The eclipse is the other way round. Look, it's ten past seven, it's November, and lighting up time's five o'clock. Scary, Colin. Really scary. Get in. I am in. Okay, how am I meant to kill this guy, huh? With a cleaver? A gun? He was in pieces. He was all over the shop. It's almost as if he'd exploded. So what are you saying, Colin? The crabs cut their way out, or what? Yeah, and I reckon that that bloke round at Wendy's has got something to do with it. Look, he arrived yesterday, the same day that the butcher exploded. For the last time, Colin, it's all to do with radiation, unknown radiation. Look, Mark, I read this book once called Invasion of the Killer Crabs, and what happened in that was... Colin, that I don't need this. Put a cassette on. But look, Mark, suppose that our environment's been interfered with by some sort of alien force. Monsters from outer space. Don't trivialise things, Martin. Yeah. Forensic boys had a terrible time. They couldn't sort him out from the rest of the meat. I had the worst job of all, though. Have you ever had to tell a young woman that her husband's dead? How did you take it? I don't know. She, she wasn't in, so I wrote it on a bit of paper and shoved it through the letterbox. What happened if Kirk or Spot got beamed down inside a solid object? I mean, what happened if Kirk got beamed down inside a fridge? Colin. Or a chemical toilet? Colin. Or a church tower? Colin. Or them big lumps Colin! Of you're just jealous. You're jealous of this bloke who's sleeping with Wendy. He's not sleeping with her, Mark. He's not going to have any time for that. There's going to be all these other aliens arriving. He's going to have to book them in somewhere before the weekend. Colin, have you thought of taking a holiday? Oh, but Colin, I know this doctor. He's good. He's very good. He's got loads of certificates and big, thick glasses. Martin! They're coming! They're coming! They're coming! I told you, Martin. Did you hear him? He was shouting, they're coming, they're coming. He was probably collecting for something. He wasn't. He was shouting, they're coming, they're coming. Well, and that could mean anything out of context. He was probably an art student. I don't like it, Martin. I just... Martin, the sky, it's turned red. The sky's all red, Martin. You know what they say, Colin? Red sky at night. Look, Wendy. I can't honestly tell you that I did not kill the butcher. You must. I don't know. You must remember. I can't. Why not? I've forgotten. Tell me. Please. Just tell me you didn't do it. I didn't do it. I believe you. Oh, Wendy, tell me again you believe I didn't do it. I believe you didn't do it. Tell me you believe I'm not a murderer. I believe you're not a murderer. Tell me you believe I'm a human being. I believe you're a human being. Listen, I find
find you very attractive. A little sad. But we can't go on like this. Look, Colin. Are you sure it's a good idea? Yeah, I've just got to talk to Wendy, sort a few things out. I'll only be ten minutes. I've got to be at practice by half seven. Look, I realise it's probably not the best time to tell you. But Wendy never liked you. Even when you were going out with her. Everybody else knew except you. To be honest, Colin, even the sight of you really depresses her. Thanks, Martin. But there are some things that a man's got to do. Like fighting injustice and oppression wherever he sees it. Yeah. Or painting the window ledges so they don't go all cracked and flaky in the winter. Colin, you're all right. You're all right too, Mark. Look, I'm just going to nip to the offie. Do you want anything? No, thanks, Mark. Don't you see? You might be a married man. I don't care. You might have a baby. I don't care about him either. We've got to face this. You might be a happily married murderer. Oh, Wendy. I'm an animal. I love you. Oh, Wendy. Wendy, please. Please. Please, can we eat now? God, that'll be Graham and Martin. I forgot I asked him around to eat, and bloody Shirley's not back here. Well, who are these people? I don't think I can face anyone right what now. Stupid. No, not until I get my memory back. Can I come to the door, haven't I? I don't have a name. What are we going to call me? What's my name? Colin! You can't call me Colin. That's the name the asshole used to hang around with. Oh, hi, Colin. Uh, hey, um, what, 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 why don't you take a murder seat? Look, but perhaps it'd be a good idea if I, uh... Well, um... Colin, do you, uh, do you want a cup of tea or something? No, thanks, Wen. Look, I've got something to say. It's very important. You must listen. Will you sit down, please? If it's about us, Colin, I don't want to know. I never liked you, you know. I know. Martin told me. Everybody else knew. He told me that, too. Just the sight of you makes me feel really depressed. I can understand that now, Wen. But I'm going to change. I'm going to take up archery. It won't make you any more attractive, you know, Colin. Anyway, Wen, this isn't about us. It's about that bloke. What about him? He exploded the butcher. Sorry, Wen, but I had to tell you. So you might be in danger. I think Look, that... Look, Colin. I think you've probably said enough. I think you ought to leave. Look, I don't think that you understand. There's something you don't understand, Colin. And that is that to love is not to possess. You see, there comes a time in every young man's life when he has to realize that you can keep a beautiful butterfly in a jar, even if the lid has holes in it. Let's say here that Wendy is that butterfly. And I am that lady with those holes in. So why don't you beat it, Colin? It's nothing personal, it's just that, well, Wendy and I are deeply in love. It's okay, honey, he's going now. Ow, my nose! We bit my nose! Did you see that? She bit my nose! I notice you're not bleeding. Oh, hi, Wendy. You're right. Look, I'll, I'll just put this, this in the fridge, OK? Oh, hello. I'm just putting this bottle of wine in this fridge. 
Okay, Martin, well, go right ahead. How do you know my name? Look, I can't explain right now. Just trust me. I will do everything you say, O oh Master. What? Just joking. <laughs> do I have to spell it out to you? I don't like you. I never... Have a good drink, Mark. We'll be eating soon. Was Graham not with you? No. Nah. I don't know what's happened to bloody Shirley, actually. She didn't come home last night. Was she at your place? Well, yeah, but... Oh, did she tell us what time she was getting off work? I don't know. We didn't speak. Why not? She was with Graham. What? What, with Wiz? But she doesn't even like Graham. Anyway, I thought he was going out with that tall girl from the Steam Museum. Oh, no, she was just a friend. Graham was worming a cat for her. Mm. Well, I don't find Graham at all attractive. I always thought Shirley would go off with one of them handsome doctors from work. Did you? Yeah. Still, let's look on the bright side, eh, Mark? Maybe Graham will wash his hair a bit more often now he's got a girlfriend. You're a really clean person, aren't you, Mark? In my line of work, Wendy, you, you have to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's really important to a woman, you know, Mark. Cleanliness. Wendy, I'm in trouble. I, I've, I've got something I shouldn't have. Have you? It's to do with this dead butcher. And what, you mean the murder case? Well, I've got certain information that leads me to think that it may not have been murder. Oh, come off it, Mark. You wouldn't say that if you'd seen the state of the body. I mean, nobody could do that to themselves. No, I'm not saying it's suicide, Wendy. But he wasn't killed by any conventional weapon or explosive, you see. Oh, I did the test myself. There was no fingerprints or footprints, no telltale fabric, mud or pollen traces. Nothing. Nothing but very high levels of unknown radiation. And yesterday, my boss told me to drop the investigation. There's a massive cover-up going on, Wendy. We can't trust the authorities anymore. Colin, I'm sorry. Don't be. Trousers fit you all right, do they? Yeah, well, Wendy said it would be okay if I, I was wore... wearing those trousers the night Wendy and I fell in love. They're the only trousers that ever meant anything to me. Look, you can have them back right I've now. I've got other trousers. Want. Look, Colin, don't you think... And don't you think it's about time we stop beating around the bush? After all, we're both grown-ups, especially me. I know what's going on. Has anyone ever told you you look like Donald Sutherland? I saw this film he was in once, where everything was normal until things started to go wrong. Badly wrong. People were behaving strangely. It was almost as if they weren't themselves anymore. The police had to build all these roadblocks. See, it was all to do with this stuff like dandelions. No, not like dandelions, like that, that fluffy stuff that comes off dandelions. Anyhow, it was all over the town. Turned out, it was coming from outer space. What about Judas Iscariot? What about Glenn Miller? Well, there must be a good reason for it, Martin. They're all wanking. Too right there is. American military and economic imperialism. I mean, take all these burger places. Well, I really like burgers. If it's anybody, it's the bloody Russians we've got to worry about. You never see any Russian burgers, don't you? There's something else, Wendy. I've got something that belongs to them, something they may want back. They may be after me right now. What do you mean? Look, oh, I found this... <laughs> Wendy, where'd you get this? Oh, that? Oh, oh, I got it in that 
new hologram shop in town. It's a pencil shop, nothing. It's quite nice, isn't it? It, it hasn't got a hole. Well, I haven't got any pencils. <laughs> they make you use borrows in the falls these days, so you can't change it later. So, anyhow, by this time, the orphanage is swarming with zombies, right? And the kids are all on fire. And, and they're all just taking these big bites out of each other's hips and thighs, like, right down to the bone. God, those zombies. Anyhow, it, it all builds up to this classic ending, right? Where there's this head zombie. Oh, the one in the sheepskin jacket? Yeah. yeah. And he's got this other bloke trapped up this ski lift. <laughs> up this ski lift, right? And he thinks yeah. the other bloke's oh, human, but it, it but turns out he isn't. He only looks human. Really, he's one of those, um, yeah. A aliens, aliens from outer space. space. Right. right. Anyhow, the zombie just goes right up to him and gives him this like good bite in the chest. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> no blood. Not a trickle. And that's what I was getting round to. Because when Wendy bit your nose before, I thought... <laughs> but I thought you were... What did you think, Colin? What have you done? It's nothing. It's just a deep incision. Look, I'm... I'm sorry I bit your nose earlier. It's okay. It's just you made me really mad, you know? Yeah, I'm sorry too. <laughs> Because what do you know about it? You've lost your memory. For Christ's sake, the ice, the bloody ice, it froze my hand and went creeping up my arm. Don't be stupid, Colin. Look, I want this mess cleared up now. Oh, no! Shirley's quail eggs. They're bloody expensive, they are, Colin. These aren't quail eggs, Wendy. I used to know somebody who was a bird spotter. Hang on there, Martin. It's not bird spotter, it's bird watcher. Look, you've got to listen to me. Yeah, but you get train spotters, don't For you? For Christ's sakes, Martin, the ice tried to freeze me alive like some sort of giant mammoth. Why won't you face up to what's going on? Things have been happening all day, all over Middleford. Things are going wrong here, badly wrong. And it's all to do with him. It's got nothing to do with him, Colin. He knows my name. I told you not to mention that to anyone. Don't talk to Martin like that. He's my friend. You don't have any friends, Colin. Yeah, that's something you wouldn't understand, isn't it? Friendship. You Americans, you're so superficial. Superficial? We're only like that on the surface. Look, I want this mess cleared up now. Now. Hello, Mrs. Maynard. What are you doing now? I brought you some crests, Wendy. Thank you. Something the matter? Yes. Well, come through to the other room, eh, and we'll have a drink and a chat. And a dance? No, just a drink and a chat. There are further reports of domestic appliances turning themselves on and off. Sit down. Sure. Right then, Mrs. Maynard, tell me all about it. It's my budgie. He's exploded. What about you been feeding him the wrong food? That's not the only thing. Freddie, that's my husband, bought some Chinese fish and chips home for our tea last night. And as I opened up the packets, all these locusts swarmed out. But you ordered locusts. 
All I'm saying is it's all to do with radiation, unknown radiation. No, it's not. Shut it's... up, Colin. It's unknown radiation. It's the Americans who are behind it all. I mean, look what they do to dolphins. Look, all I'm trying to say is... What do I... you know about it? You don't even come from around here, do you? But all I'm trying to say is that I, I think it's kind of strange there are no children in this town. No kids. Well, that's just the kind of town it is. And what kind of town is that? A town with no children. It's interesting. It's all over his back. He says it's his hormones. I think he's turning into a communist. I don't think that's very likely, Mrs. Maynard. My Sarge says that communism is like original sin. You're either born with it or you're not. He says he'd like to take the firstborn of every family. And Wendy, it's true what Colin was saying before about the ice. I saw it. It was trying to freeze him. Hello? Shirley, where are you? Graham, why is he going to be all right? See, we'll, we'll, we'll bring him round when you can, Shirley, OK? Yeah, I'll see you. All the best. Oh, Shirley. It's Graham. What about Graham? He's been sucked down a drain. No, no, Oblinsky. No, no, no. Sorry. No. Sorry. Oh. Oh. What's the matter with him? He's been taking a lot of antibiotics recently, and he had some cottage cheese earlier, and they told me. Listen, I'll take your boots together and we'll all sit down, yeah? It's too late. She's gone to baby Jesus. Come on. That's it, quick! The front door! It's no good. The door. Ah. 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 